Habits that bring success. Have your spritzer bottle ready because the paper is very dry. I'm going to be taking some alizarin crimson, so add a little Hansa yellow to it. it. Gives a beautiful little orange color, kind of a brownie orange. This is the landform in the mid distance. And I'm just doing a mountain shape, especially if you take the alizarin and mix it into the existing brown or light orange. Watch out for that birch tree. Um, phthalo blue into the sky. And you have to have enough water. The bead is not really flowing here. We're more or less putting on a flat wash. And I've decided to leave a little higher shape for the mountain. Extend it right to the other side. The great thing about the yellow in the sky is that with the right amount of blue and the right amount of yellow, you'll get a beautiful warm blue. Now because I've wet the paper with a whole wash of the blue, the alizarin crimson will dissipate or disperse into the wet blue. Now I'm touching up the edge of the shape I put in. So it almost looks like snow on the top. I'm just getting rid of the hard edge. I'm using my squirrel hair brush. Just pulling the paint down into the shape. Now add a few swipes. I love swiping in color. There's a little purple going in. So I'm getting a dark side on the right. There's a swipe of phthalo blue. Look how you can turn that squirrel hair brush. You can get a fine tip on it. And we finish off with a little texture with the paper towel. Back to the top of the sky with a little bit of alizarin. You can see the paper still wet and now I'm directing the swipes towards the tree. So if the, the sky gives the tree more attention. Everything's pointing to the star of the show which is the birch tree. Now those will go into the paper and you won't even notice it. I'm using some old paper. That's up top right corner. You can see where the paper was marked. I'll be putting a tree in there, so I'm not worried about that. Just hate to throw out a good piece of arches just because one side has been used. Okay, so we don't want the clouds to stop at the tree, so we continue through to the other side. Don't let things in the foreground stop you from putting things behind them. I like that nice shape that's drying on the right side of the mountain. We're getting a little bit of a bleed there, which is great. Okay, we're back over to the Hansa yellow. We're going to intensify the color on the mountain. In the winter, things turn golden. The greens are even more intense depending on the sun and the atmosphere. So don't be afraid to up your color values for your winter pictures. Don't let them stay cold. Keep them warm. Tap in a few trees. And we're going to be moving to the foreground next. We've done the background sky and the mid-ground mountain. And I'm working my way forward. A lot of watercolorists work their way forward in a painting. To the foreground, there's where the spritzer bottle comes in. You spray it on, let it sit in, and then just tap it off with a paper towel so there's, there's no puddles on top. The paper's just damp. Take some Payne's Gray, and I'll take some burnt sienna. 
and I'm going to be mixing up a fairly dark solution so that I can deepen some values. So far I have the light values, the mid-tones, say on the purples, on the right side of the foreground and the left side of the tree. But now I want some really good darks. And I've let the paper absorb some of the water. Check my sketch. There it is. See the darks. We're going to establish some very good darks. Tapping it into the wet paper. Let the paper do the mixing. You see it's starting to disperse on the left-hand side of the tree. And just do a few places, put some darks in. All darks can be modified later. You can lift them. You can change the shape. But you've got to get some bold darks in somewhere in the second stage of the painting. Don't be afraid to scatter and spatter. So we're breaking up the shapes. Oh, there's the rigger brush. Here comes the first tree, the bush. And every time that brush stops, you get a little node on the tree. And that's how trees grow. They grow, they stop, they grow, they stop. And that's how you want to handle your rigger brush. Make it go, let it stop, and then a little flick at the end. I'm always thinking of three, three, five, seven. Use odd numbers. Now we're putting some little calligraphy strokes here and there around the edges. So the edges don't look like big black spots. See, another one over here. You can see the advantage of doing the trees in the exercise session. Because in those sessions, you learn how to use the brush. You feel confident with it. You start looking at nature, you'll see this rigger brush imitates those branches perfectly. And there go the branches. The bottom of the picture was spritzered, so it's dispersing. You can see it's all clouding out. Right there, you can see that dispersion there. I'll be uh, trimming that back with a paper towel in a moment. Sometimes it's a good habit not to break the flow of your painting. There you see, we're pointing it out now. It's one of the things I'll do when I'm finished laying in some of these dark branches. Okay, we're going to work on the star of the show, which is the birch tree. Usually birch branches come out around 30 degrees, sometimes 45, but the ends of the branches are really ragged, almost messy. So the rigger brush is perfect for that. Keep loading that brush, get lots of flow in it. Little black spots, very characteristic of a white birch. There goes the paper towel, just trimming back that little spread there, which will be darkened later. We're going to make that branch connect to the tree. I added a little bit more burnt sienna to the thalo, uh, not to the thalo, to the, the gray, paints gray. And now we're fringing the branches. Little flicks of the uh, rigger brush. And here we're putting that tree in up through the paper where it was scored. Okay, here we are expanding the dark areas, and we're now we're doing the pitter patter, salt and pepper, scattered darks. Very rarely is the snow perfectly white. It usually has all kinds of debris from the trees, from the wind, the animals. We'll take a little more burnt sienna, add it to the red, 
And away we go. We're moving along with this picture quickly. Even though I've sped it up, I'm still painting fairly surely and with a certain amount of speed and confidence. There's that wiggle stroke. You can wiggle these brushes. They're great for spreading paint. See how that spreads? Yeah, it's a great brush. I've really enjoyed using it. Now I'm just scoring the dark paint with a little wooden spoon. One of the little tricks we learned in our lessons, attaching the branch again with some good solid darks, extending a few of those little branches. Good solid warm darks. Now take a look at the picture as I scroll down. You see that big dark area? That'll be just wonderful when it's finished. Moving along, all the little details. I call it calligraphy because you're not really trying to make it into anything. Here comes the shadow. Nice violet color makes a beautiful shadow on the snowbank. Soften it with my one half inch straight brush right down the right side of the tree with a thin wash of the violet. And we don't want a hard edge, so we tap out the edge with a damp brush. You now we're getting to the point where you could almost take this as a watercolor the way it is, but I'm going to add some very juicy, warm color tones. Some reds and yellows and oranges and greens. Just going to place them here and there. Because the paper's wet, they're going to sink right into the paper. Look at that beautiful red there. Don't make cold pictures if you're doing a winter scene keep them warm. See the yellow on the right hand side, little leaves. There's the trick we learned, the end of our brush. Breaking up the edge. Little dab with the towel. And now we're going to my little sable brush and adding some beautiful little warm accents into the wet paint. Look at that birch tree. Positively glowing. And we've done very little to it. You can see the initial sky color is underneath. As we go up, look at it. You could stop right here. And so I'll keep going. You can follow me and see what else I can do to this painting. But it's fine right now.